welcome back to my YouTube channel, hashtag Movie Bay. I am Movie Bay, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a recap of episodes one through four of season six, The Circle. Now, before I get too into it, though, I would like for y'all to drop down and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Because here on Movie Bay, I do reviews, reactions, and commentary to movies and television. And if that is the type of content that you like, then you might as well stick around and hit the subscribe button. And if you find yourself enjoying my commentary along the way, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up and or drop a comment down below. I didn't even think that the circle was going to come out with a season six because it's been, you know, like a little bit of a gap in between. Because if so, I definitely would apply. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the cast of season six. So first up, we have Kyle, who's 31 from Miami, and he's a professional basketball player um, overseas. Now, Kyle is married. Oh, beautiful. However, of course, he's going to come into the circle as single. Because what better strategy is it than to flirt with everybody? Now, Kyle is also going to lie about his job because of the stigma that comes along with professional basketball players, right? So he decides that he's going to put basketball trainer in his bio. Because, like, there's such a big difference. No, not really. Still an F-boy. <laughs> an F-boy by association. Now, if y'all didn't know, you get to bring one thing into the circle and Cal decided to bring his dog. Okay, it's kind of supposed to be like you're on vacation, but yet you're running around cleaning up poop and piss. I would never. Next up, we have Lauren. Lauren is 26. She's from Philly, and she is a Twitch gamer girl. And when I tell y'all she is animated, she is very, very, very much so animated. Next up, we have Miles. Now, let's, let's talk about Miles real quick. Miles, who calls himself Young Poppy Fuego and told us that he is jewish i don't know i'm getting identity crisis from miles but i also like some things about miles he's 29 from la he's a party guy ai engineer and he is a proud f boy i like the self-awareness he's blunt he knows he ain't and he ain't gonna pretend to be shit, period next another person who is very honest with themselves is brandon now even though brandon is coming in as a catfish named olivia he didn't come in with that generic catfish, oh, don't judge a book by its cover underlying message bullshit that people try to spit every year. Brandon was honest. He says, I'm going to use Olivia's pictures to my advantage, and this is my chance to be hot because in real life, I'm quote unquote not. Period. Thank you for being honest. This is my chance to be a baby because in real life, I'm not a baby. Thank you, Brandon. We appreciate that. But Brandon is also 34 and he is a nursing assistant. So everything is going to be the same about Brandon except for his profile pic. Um, let's continue with the cast. We got Cassie, who is 29 from Kentucky. She's a mom of three and she's engaged. What I like about Cassie is she did not change her engaged status to single. She's going to come in being her regular degular schmegler self. She is platinum bleach blonde. Not platinum, but bleach blonde, um, down south country girl, accent and all. We like Cassie. Next up, we have Steffi, who's 35-year-old medium slash astrologer. That's honestly all they really gave us about Steffi. And then we have Caress. Now, Caress is 37 from Dallas. Whoop, whoop, if you know, you know. And she's a motivational speaker, but she decides that she's going to come in playing her 26-year-old brother that is a rapper. Keep in mind that that is a decade difference in age now for the first circle chat of this episode um olivia's messages were coming off as basic and others are thinking that she's possibly a catfish now brandon kind of made me cry brandon slash olivia kind of made me cry because he started having a breakdown about you know how he wants to jump in the chat but he just doesn't know he doesn't know what to say and how being in the circle is harder than what he thought it would be and i just wanted to cry because you know sitting on the couch you thinking that it's going to be easy and then brandon kind of just like reassure like this ain't as easy as y'all might think it is now you guys it's time for the first circle game of the season and it is called for real for real so the cast will be asked a few questions and they get to vote yes or no to and of course everybody gets to see how you voted at the end so the first question is will you unfriend someone that has been canceled everybody said no except for miles miles is the only one to say yes but his explanation was if you did something bad enough to get canceled it might have me looking at you differently so that is one of the questions that kind of needed a little more explanation like well what did this person do per se like is it like on a diddy level is it, you know what i'm saying like 
it, what are we getting canceled for here? Like, let's be honest. Because if it was, then yes, I, I would unfriend you too. The second question is, would you date someone that is on OF? If y'all know, y'all know. And Miles, once again, is the only guy to say yes. So the other guys in the chat, Kyle and Caress, who's playing Paul, are looking at him like, say, bro, that ain't cool for some odd reason, you know, because guys are like possessive and things like that, blah, 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 blah. But Miles, he cool with it. Um, number three, would you keep, oh, uh, would you keep a cheating friend's secret? And everybody says, of course, that's my friend. It's none of my business. And Mal is the only one to say no, because he don't play with that cheating stuff. If you didn't want me to tell, then you shouldn't have told me. But everybody is looking at Mal like, hmm, can I trust this guy to keep my secret? And the final question was, would you or have you ever broke up over text message? And once again, Mal is all by himself, but this time with pause with Paul's with Paul by saying yes they have Miles' justification he's a player and sometimes he's had three dates in one day so how can I make a personal phone call or meet up with these people to break up with them in person sometimes the text is just easier now y'all have y'all ever broke up with somebody ever text because I'm more of a ghoster myself <laughs> Nah, they really would have hated me because I'm more of a ghost than myself. I'm just not gonna reply. Sometimes I'll even block you if you keep blowing me up. Like I don't I don't like you. Leave me alone. You know? But when the game is over, like I stated, people are upset with Miles because they had a persona in their head of him, and then all of his answers to the questions kind of made them look at him differently. Um, and Paul obviously doesn't want to be grouped in with Miles because he kind of took the biggest hit to this game in this game. And Cal and Lauren, they gained a mutual respect for each other because they had similar answers throughout the entire game. Now it's time for the circle chats of this episode. First, Cal decides to reach out to Lauren. And when I tell y'all this is one of the most annoying chats I've ever seen with their freaking annoying nicknames. And basically they were bonding over gaming and anime. Woo. All right. So Paul decides to also reach out to Lauren. And both, by the end of their conversation, both of them decide that, mm, I think Paul's a catfish. I think Lauren is a catfish. Now Lauren is kind of spot on. She thinks that Paul is old and possibly a girl based off of the way that he's speaking. And I can't hold you. It's a 10 year age gap. You are speaking like you 37 more so than 26, as well as you're still in your feminine bag and men don't talk like that. Men don't talk like that. <laughs> like, let's be honest. So I'm not going to be surprised if Paul gets caught as being a quote unquote catfish. Now, why Caress slash Paul thinks that Lauren is a catfish? I'm not sure. Maybe it's paranoia. Um, Olivia decides to reach out to Stephanie and Miles also decides to reach out to Cassie because he needs to have some type of something to keep him afloat in this game because he knew he did so poorly um, in the for real for real game. So they kind of create a blonde bond alliance. All right, y'all, so we get our first alert of the season, and it is time for the cast to rate each other from one to six, one being your favorite, six being your least favorite. So Kyle puts Lauren as his number one and Miles in his number five position. Um, Olivia picks Steph as her number one and Miles in her number six position. Miles chooses Cassie as his number one because of their blonde alliance and vice versa, and Cassie also puts Olivia in second um, Paul puts Cassie in fourth because they didn't connect at all. Steffi puts Cal in her number four because she also doesn't even see a future alliance with him. Lauren puts... I can't even read my own handwriting. Oh, Paul. Paul and Lauren both put each other last place because they think they're all... They're um, both catfish, possible catfish. So the ratings are as follows. Paul gets seventh place. Cassie and Miles are tied for fifth. Kyle gets fourth, Steffi gets third, Lauren gets second, and Olivia gets first place. Now, when I tell y'all, these ratings surprised me. I was expecting Lauren. I really was. Um, how about this? At the very beginning of the episode, I would have thought that Miles and Lauren would have been the influencers. After the game, that kind of went down for Miles. But I definitely thought Lauren was going to be an influencer 
and possibly I have no idea who else could have been. But I didn't think Olivia, especially Olivia is number one. And based off her first chat and her only talking to Steffi, I don't even know how she got the number one influencer position. But anyways, let's not think too hard about it because it could just be production. So <laughs> another alert comes in and we find out that no one is going home, but two people will be added to the game. Olivia gets to choose between two profiles and she chooses Corey Taylor. And Lauren gets to choose between two profiles and she chooses Max, who will be the AI player of the game. And that is the end of episode one. If you are enjoying my commentary thus far, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up. And of course, leave a comment comment down below what are your thoughts on the cast thus far based off of episode one and question would you keep a cheating friend's secret i mean i would but i would also tell that friend you need to just break up with them because why is you cheating for like for what for why for why all right so let's go ahead and get into episode two episode two begins with introducing our new players to the circle first we have Corey taylor I didn't think I was going to like her name, how it's spelled, but I think it's Q. And she also goes by QT. Isn't that adorable? Anyway, she used to be a dancer for a professional basketball team. Um, she's 26 from New York, and she's open for love. But more importantly, she's a super fan. So I am expecting nothing but strategy out of you, QT, okay? Next, we have Max, who's the AI player, chat box, and... When I saw the teaser for this season and they said they were going to have an AI player, I was annoyed. But just like watching the show, I'm not as annoyed by the chat box than I thought I would be. Okay. So for that morning, of course, everybody has to recap um, what happened the day before and think about the certain strategies they want to implement for the day. So when Steffi wakes up, she has this feeling. Don't forget, Steffi is the medium. She has this feeling that Olivia, played by Brandon, is an old dude. She might be on to something there. Paul also wants to start an alliance with all of the guys, being as they were all voted at the bottom of the rankings last night. Paul was seven, Mouse was tied for fifth, and Cal was fourth. Um, Cassie wants to add Olivia to the blonde alliance with Miles. Max wants to align with the influencers. Max, the AI chat box, wants to align with the influencers, being as they were the influencers. So they must have a lot of popularity amongst the group. Now, the circle chats for this episode, both influencers, Lauren and Olivia, reach out to the people that they chose, you know, to let them know, hey, I chose you, so be nice to me, basically. Um, oh, and Olivia also adds Cassie to the QT chat and they hints at starting an all girl alliance because they feel, they just have a feeling that the boys are starting an all boys alliance. Speaking of an all boys alliance, that is when Caress, AKA Paul reaches out to the boys, Kyle and Miles, <laughs> Kyle and Miles to start an all boy alliance because they were all at the bottom of the totem pole. And um, their strategy is to rate each each other number one no, no matter what number one and number two so they can make their way to the top of the influencer chart now Steffi starts a group chat um this episode with all of the circle players and she leads a yoga session and Miles isn't here for it I mean like I understand give us something to do when there's very much so nothing to do but I feel like it's going to become a reoccurring thing it's like, what is there more to your personality than the spiritual yoga zen thing? So the game for this episode is entitled Wrap It Up Message. Now, um, each member in the circle has to write a rap uh, to and about another player. It could be positive or it can be negative. Now, Lauren and Max decide to write to each other. Um, it's very positive, but they also kind of out themselves as being good friends in the circle when no one really suspected that they were talking um, like that. Steffi writes a, a diss track to Paul, hinting that he might be a possible catfish. And Paul writes a positive rap to, quote unquote, the boys outing their alliance. QT and Miles, they shoot their shots at each other. Very annoying. Y'all know how I am when it comes to love on these shows. After the game, Cal decides to reach out to Paul and, you know, just check on him after Steffi hinted that he might be a possible catfish and just solidifying their alliance. Now, 
I think that they need to talk to other people more so just than each other. Because if you have an alliance, we don't need to really talk every day. We just need to kind of touch bases on everything, bring back information that we found out about others back to the alliance. But they're just sticking together. But they did make each other their uh, day one, their finals. All right. So they have a finals alliance. Then we get an alert. And this is when the circle informs the group that there is an AI bot in the chat. And people immediately start thinking, most of the group start thinking that Steffi could possibly be the AI and Paul. That about wraps up episode one and two. Be sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for when I drop episodes three and four, which will be before Wednesday when the new episodes air. Thank y'all so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. And um, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.